His name is Ish Berry, and this is Berry Media Unrestricted. He explores the city of Houston, looking for people who are not afraid to get unrestricted. Interesting men and women who have an extraordinary journey, doing the kind of things that make great stories to tell for the rest of us. Now get ready for Unrestricted. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Unrestricted Podcast. I'm your host, Ish Berry. And joining me today back in the building, first time on a 4K camera system here. First time. Can you see all of my pores? <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing pores. We got a good shot of the ears there. Great shot of the ears. Yes. Looking fabulous. <laughs> we got Black Sheep Cosplay in the building. Welcome back. Hey, hey. Welcome back, my friend. Thanks for having me back. My pleasure. Thank you for coming, especially under such short, short notice and... Ah, I miss the old studio, but I mean, hell, shit happens. I'm trying to find somewhere else to record and all that. Now we're in the office building. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's get down to business. So today's episode is going to be about photography and modeling. And in your first episode, we talked about cosplay, which is a form of modeling. Mm -hmm. And actually, your full name on social media is Black Sheep Cosplay and Modeling. modeling yes. Yes. Yeah, so how did you get into modeling specifically? Um, so I started out in cosplay just because nerdy girl wanted wanted attention. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm an attention whore. Uh, and so I started out in cosplay, did, so, uh, did some shoots for that, and mainly just me, like, asking a lot of my photographer friends, hey, will you take some pictures of me? Hey, I want some pictures of myself. And then... I eventually started making friends with other photographers who like knew the ones at conventions doing mm. cosplay photography. Yeah. And I was just like, look, it doesn't have to be a specific character. If you have an idea, throw it at me. I will, you know, yeah. come, uh, come at you with what I've got and see what you like. If it works, we can shoot it. Um, I think one of my first modeling shoots was actually um, with Mega Ship okay. Photography. Yeah, he does good work. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was it was a Halloween themed set, or no, it was horror themed, and he was like just something horror related, and. I just ran with it because I'm also a horror buff. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Felissa Rose coming this weekend to Houston. <laughs> I want to see her again. But yeah, that's how uh, that's how I got into the modeling side of it and just kind of went from there. I think after that, somebody did a like Valentine's themed like group shoot. Yeah. And it was just a bunch of models. The theme was Valentine's. You, there were all sorts of things yeah. there, and I just went, okay, I really like that too. Yeah. Let's get into that as well. All so. right, that's what's up. That's what's up. So what are some of the things you enjoy about modeling? It, it's kind of like cosplay. It's a creative outlet, especially when I have a photographer that says, hey, here's a general theme throw some ideas at me. Mm -hmm. It lets me like just unpack all of my creativity and go, okay, here's this, this, and this. I can do this outfit or I can do that. I can, you know, we can throw these kinds of colors at it, these kinds of like just general ideas and see what you have, see what I have, mix them together, come up with something great, something cool. That's what's so. up. And what's something you, speaking of um, photographers, what's something that you look for in a photographer? I think people should, even even just getting simple portraits, like right now we're in the holiday season, so people are probably looking for photographers for you know holiday pictures, Christmas yeah. pictures. You used to specifically, what's something you look for in a photographer before you work with them? Um, as a solo model, I personally look for photographers that are willing to, you know, work with me on, hey, I understand you're solo. I want you to feel comfortable. I want this to be professional, but also, you know, not 
feel like a job. Yeah. Um, I want you to feel safe as the model. Because I've, I've had photographers DM me in all social medias um, saying, hey, I want to shoot with you. And I've had a bunch of them where the second I say, okay, cool. First question, can I bring an assistant with me? And they're like, nah, man, I work alone. And that's, that's a real big red flag. Yeah, absolutely. Like safety for your model, whether your model is male, female, both, n and neither. Yeah. You want your model to feel safe and comfortable. Absolutely. And the second I have any photographer like rail against me being comfortable, especially if it's more of the boudoir and like lingerie shoots mm -hmm. and more risque shoots, that that other person, that third party is just a, it's a safety net not only for the model, but also for the photographer. I agree. Just to be like, hey, this person over here was watching and saw that nothing happened. You know? Yeah. It keeps, it keps you both safe. Oh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. There's, yeah, I've... I never understood that, but then, you know, like you said, that goes to a photographer might have arteria, bad arteria motives, and yeah, you know, you and I have shot together. You've brought, yeah. you know, you've you've brought people to shoots, and I brought my own assistants to oh, shoots. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, hey, the more the merrier. You know, and I look at it like this: as a photographer, I'm open to everyone's opinion. You know, you might bring like the time we did that shoot. At Wortham Theater, the pool, the, mm -hmm. the beautiful waterfalls, and you had brought yep. somebody, you brought one of your friends. You know, she had some ideas. Yeah. Why not work with them? You know what I mean? Outside of what you and I, yeah. you know, saw or, or had plans. So, you know, the the more the merrier. Yeah, and, the, and that other person is also, like, it can be a third eye to, like, whenever you're behind the camera, there may be something that you're going for that you're hitting an angle and you're not seeing what you need. Mm. Whereas that other person sitting off to the side might be able to, from that different perspective, see it and be like, hey, what about this? Yeah. You know? And me yeah, as a model, you know, I, I can only give so much as far as like giving you what you're looking for from that. Yeah, no, that's true. You know? That's true. Um, have you ever had any wardrobe malfunctions? <laughs> I'm going to go back to that, that shoot at, at Wortham where, you know, I was changing in the middle of the park. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you had on like three or four pieces of swimwear, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had on a bikini underneath a mesh bodysuit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah. <laughs> and I had changed into that from the, the I think it was a maroon bodysuit. Yeah, the maroon that I had. one. Yeah. yeah. yeah I changed in, into that from the maroon body bodysuit and there was no like bathroom nearby for me to change into. I would have had to have walked like half a mile. That's something. the only thing I hate about that that spot at Wortham. Like, yeah. It's a beautiful area. Um, that waterfall is, is beautiful and the, the trails and the way that the bricks are laid and everything, but yeah. there, there's nowhere to change if you do it more than one outfit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you got, you know, it connects to the Buffalo Bayou, so you got people that are running and jogging, mm -hmm. exercising and mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. <laughs> but honestly, as far as like malfunctions, I don't think I have, at least me personally, mm -hmm. um, the closest I've ever come to a malfunction has been at shoots at my own house, <laughs> where like I shift and a boob will pop out. Yeah. But I'm at home, so yeah, yeah, it's whatever. Right, yeah, yeah, free the tatas. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes with stuff like that, you just kind of roll with it, and you get gold without even realizing it. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you prefer indoor or outdoor photography or modeling? That's a real tough one because, like, I grew up in the country, so I'm fine with being outdoors, mm -hmm. and so I don't have a problem with outdoor photography. I think the only thing I have only issue I have with outdoor photography is when it's like really hot like this past summer was Ooh. and it's not so much 
the heat as the fact that the heat starts to melt your makeup yeah. and you're constantly having to retouch and it that's true yeah. it just it prolongs the shoot and you end up like leaving it miserable so i even though i grew up out in the country i'm used to being outside all the time in the heat and stuff like that i would much prefer to be a nice sweet happy little house cat <laughs> you know you know, Taking my pictures inside <laughs> in the air conditioning. Like me as a photographer, I'm I, I love outdoor photographer photography. I love yeah. natural sunlight, especially on a perfect day. But like you said, summer like we had this past summer. Oof. I made it a point not to do anything outdoors. All of my shoes this year. Same. Oh, let me start thinking. All my shoes this year. Yeah, everyone were either indoors. Or they were at night outside, mm -hmm. where it was a lot, a lot cooler, and the sun wasn't blazing out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, because yeah. this summer, even at night, it was like eighty-five to ninety degrees. Yeah, easily. Yeah. So, you get the right day, the right angle of the sun, and you, you have yeah. some bomb. Uh, I did have pictures. a shoot in Galveston, a few years, several years ago. It was actually like a year after I moved down here. Mm -hmm. um, it was a it was a pirate themed shoot. It was Pirates and Mermaids. And we shot it all under Murdoch's. Okay. And it was at, like we started, we got there before sunrise and. Was that the one with the cosplay vote group? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I wasn't there, but I, I saw yeah. the pictures and, and all stuff. All those yeah, golden going, hour shoot yeah. shots. Yeah, I got there oh, real early in the morning, yeah. I think, yeah. Chris Santiago was there. Um, oh, God. I know Woody was out there. Yeah, yeah, Woody um, was there. Christina was there. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone from the Cosplay Vogue group was there and had a blast, had a good time, got some great shots. I, oh, yeah. There's still that one from Chris Santiago. Just perfect. I still use it to this day. Yeah. <laughs> So, now nah, and speaking of epic shoots, we got to talk about since you and I are here, the booty of mass destruction shoot. <laughs> it, it, I was trying to find a way to segue it is part of my notes here. Like, that's that's the perfect timing, and, and I want to recap real quick because I, I I still recycle those photos every once mm -hmm. in a while, and you know when people see the hashtag or or I say it. And they're like, how the hell did that come up with that? And I'm like, that's not me. That was that was all black sheep <laughs> cosplay. Me. Do you, do you remember how that came about? i not 100% sure. Um, I do know it started as a joke. I think I had seen one person use it somewhere on Instagram, and then I never saw it again until I started, like, jokingly saying it, and then we started talking about, what if we do <laughs> actually do a shoot for that? And I was like... Okay, let's do it. Because, <laughs> you know, so. I remember I had posted a picture of uh, my ex-sister while she had dabbled in, like, urban modeling. Yeah. And she was in, like, a Wonder Woman swimsuit. And it was a, it was an indoor studio I had at the time. And you saw the picture and you was like, you know, damn, she got a booty of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. And I, I posted on Instagram and I looked and I was like, God damn, like the sound of that. Yeah. That's catchy as fuck. Damn. Woo. And I love wordplay and stuff that just rolls off the tongue. I'm like, damn. And then I started thinking, I was like, man, <laughs> if I got a group of women together like the Avengers. <laughs> and just, <laughs> and things know, just fell into place. place. Yeah, it, yeah, because it was me, Rachel, Helen. Um, Christina was there for yeah, a little Christina bit. Yeah, Christina was there she for a little bit. She couldn't stay long, but she, she yeah. was there for a couple of shots. And uh, my friend Kim, she yeah, came. Yeah, Kim was there She too. was there in the early morning. Yeah, we got kicked off the property again. Yeah, a cop pulled up and told us we, <laughs> we had to leave, otherwise we were going to get arrested. <laughs> But, you know, I like how he did it, though, because he, you know, he checked all of the boxes. He was like, hey, you guys work for Union Pacific? Like, no. You guys own the building right here? No. No. And he's like, hey, this is private property. Y'all got to get off in the safety yeah. with the train. And then, I don't know if you remember that, but there was a train that had passed by. was going slow. Yeah. And the guys from the, the engineers from the train yeah. were, like, waving. It was, yeah, like, waving. trying to take pictures and stuff. <laughs> Look like at that, Union Pacific. Yeah. And then as we were leaving to go back to our cars to go to a different location, 
we nearly caused an accident. Yes. Because yes, somebody yes, was, yeah. some guy was like rubbernecking so hard. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I remember even us getting out when, because, and I'll show pictures in a video here, but for people who never see it, basically the shoot was Daisy Dukes, Heels, mm -hmm. Wife Beaters on a railroad track. Yeah. <laughs> on yep. a sunny Saturday Houston afternoon. And, and fortunately, the, the weather was perfect that day. It wasn't oh too my God, hot. It was. It, it was, was. Ooh, it was just nice. Just and the, right. the amount of sun coming in, took some good shots. Played with the the backdrop of like downtown Houston and stuff for a minute. Yeah. And um, because I remember when we were getting out, because I rode. Kim wasn't familiar with downtown, so she picked me up at my spot, met y'all there. Yeah, and I, and I rode with couple, Rachel. Yeah, so. and I remember there was a couple of guys that were stopping. As they cross the train tracks, yep. yeah, you get your social medias and holler, and then like, once I got my equipment, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to shoot. Like, I I, I get it <laughs> yeah. from a male perspective. It's not every day, you, you know. You just mind of, your own, you know, yeah. you mind your own business. You see a whole bunch of various thick, fine, voluptuous women wearing Daisy Dukes, and you like, oh, <laughs> uh, uh, what y'all doing? Hey, can I get your number? What social media? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I got like. A good 50, 60 followers. A day. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just Cause from like, that. Yeah, because even like if two guys came up to you and got your social media, then of course, when he gets to where we go, he's going to call his friends. He's like, hey, you won't believe what happened today. We were going yeah. down and off of, what was that, off of Samson and somewhere. And oh, God. man, you got sharing remember. profiles or something. <laughs> They're going to yeah. share the your profile. Hey, man, look, and look at this fine ass lady <laughs> I talked to today. This is her socials. Absolutely. Look, you can see more pictures Just, of her. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what I loved about that shoot the most? Not only we were able to bring, you know, different women, different shapes and sizes to come together, but I love the camaraderie because Kim, mm -hmm. she was a, someone I worked with at the time at Direct Energy, and I had always been telling us, like, hey, you need a model. You got a shape. You're voluptuous as fuck. Yeah. You need to come out and be a part of this. I'm glad she did. She really came out her shell. She didn't know yeah. the first thing to do, and y'all helped her out with her posing. Yeah, because I remember she was and, super and shy. And and everything. Oh, yeah. She was hella, hella and she, shy. And she was like, I don't know what to do. And me and Christina and Rachel were all like, don't worry. We got you. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, you know, like, I'm trying to be semi-professional. It's like, you ain't got to do shit. Just, just turn to the back. We want to see that ass. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> She gonna kill me when she hear this and watch this. Oh Lord! <laughs> uh, um, and you know, I and we talked about this via DM, and I gotta ask you, what was your first thought seeing Kim? Because she got a real unique figure. <laughs> <laughs> I told you my idea. My first thought was, damn. <laughs> Mama got a nice ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kim. I love you. <laughs> yeah, I told her, too, yesterday. I, I texted her. I was like, hey, if everything works together, I said, I'm going to be with, with a friend. We're going to do an a episode about photography. I said, like, we're probably going to mention you and talk about, you know, the yeah. shoot. She probably was like, <laughs> <all like this." laughs> you know, and when, when we was playing, when, once she had agreed to it, I was like, Okay, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, I should, and one of my, we'll get to this later, but one of my, my biggest regrets as a photographer is that I didn't start doing behind the scenes videos sooner for us, like yeah. just having my phone on the tripod and just letting it record, because I would have loved to have gotten y'all reaction if she got out the car, <laughs> just like, who the fuck did Ishmael bring with all this fucking ass? Who? Pretty who, much, yeah. She was like, who, who, what? What, what, Ish, where you find her at? <laughs> It's like, this is actually my coworker. <laughs> like, this person that turned off the electricity when y'all don't pay her. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, was, that was my first thought, was exactly what you said. Who is this lady with all this ass getting out the car with Ish? <laughs> and you know what's funny? A question I get asked from time to time just by like, it's only dudes that ask this question because some guys are like, they want to know like stats and statistics like, oh, who's the tallest chick I ever photographed, the shortest? Yeah. Without a doubt, it would people actually like, Kim got the biggest butt I ever photographed. That's 62 inches. And she told me the other day, like, that's what I have 62 inches. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a lot of ass. I'm glad I was able to get her out of her comfort zone. And then actually the the commend y'all again on that. 
she ended up hiring me for a shoot later on. I think it was the next year because she wanted to compete in, um, I want to say it was uh, Ashley Stewart was doing a model search mm -hmm. and they had a, a function down here in Houston. I seem to remember you saying something on on. Yeah, media and, and we that. went back out to, because yeah. um, I had took her pictures at um, Wortham Theater, the thing by, by yeah. Wortham Theater, because she really likes, she's a water person. She loves oceans and yeah. cruising and all that kind of stuff. But um, has there ever been a photo shoot that you've been scared or, or had, like, any yes. kind of fear? Okay, can you tell us about um, that? I, I'm not going to name names mm -hmm. because... It is what it is, okay. um, and doing so is not going to change anything. Um, but I had a photo shoot where um, we did two. It was generally the same theme, but like two different looks. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was right when I first started modeling. Um, it was a Wonder Woman themed shoot. And I had thrown out the idea of like biker Wonder Woman. Mm, it's not bad. And I had everything for it, like the outfits and everything. Um, and there were two different reasons why I was scared during those shoots. Um, first one was because area we were shooting at was at night, mm. not the best side of Houston to be. Yeah. You know, a white girl walking around <laughs> in skimpy clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate to say, I hate to say it. But, yeah, like just you know. like I'm sorry, catch you, but like going back to the booty master, we could have done that at night. Yeah, we, we could have done no. that at night in that area. Hell no, mm -hmm. not without more security or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but like we got through that and it was all good. And then we switched to the other look, and it it was meant to be a more like sexy boudoir ish kind mm. of look. Um, but the photographer got a little too handsy. Oh, I hate to hear that. I'm sorry. So, yeah. That's... Uh, and it wasn't so much that I was scared of him or anything. It was just like... It's like, it was, you it was, inappropriate as yeah, fuck. Yeah, it was you inappropriate. Know, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, there, there's always that fear being a woman, you know, alone with any man. Yeah. I hate to say it. Um, You're right, yeah. But... It was more just like inappropriate touching, and once it, once it happened, I was like, "Whoa, no, we're yeah. not going any further. We got the shots we want." Get the hell up out of here! Damn, Have sorry a good that night. happened. So. Shit. It, I, but I, it's it was also it could have been worse than what it was. Yeah. Um, sucked that it happened, but I learned my lesson, and after that is when I started making sure that. I don't shoot with anyone, so, uh, like with one person, without having an assistant or you know some a, kind of backup, some sort something. of backup yeah. person or third person to be like, whoa, hey, that's not okay. You no, know? I don't. I don't blame you, and and it makes it, it just makes the rest of because I've heard horror stories from various women about photographers and, mm -hmm. and you know and even later on where a photographer try and cross the battery boundaries and, and, and date their clients and stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's just like that just makes the rest of us look bad as an yeah. industry. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> you yeah. Know? And there is that that misconception about photographers as well. Especially mm -hmm. male photographers, unfortunately. Like, yes, it happens, but it's also not every photographer that is like that. I know a lot of photographers out there that could care less about their models beyond, hey, let's be creative together. Um, and then, you know, I know photographers that have dated some of their models. Yeah. I, hell, I know a photographer that he and I have worked together for years, and he had some, he had some partner that swore up and down he was only doing it because he wanted to get tail, and he was just Damn. like, I've never once touched any of the models. Or even like proposition them. Yeah. So. Let's just say a coworker, like you know, I hate to bring it back, but like you know, Kim, and it's like, yeah. hey, you know, if you're nervous, check my references. You know, like I tag yeah. anyone I work with that I post on social media. I tag them. You can slide a DM and say, hey, 
How was it working with Ish? Yeah. Is he a jerk? Is he, yeah. you know, is he too touchy feely? This, that, and the other, you know. And they tell you, you know, like just the problem. They, you know, have no reason to lie. It's <laughs> it's just like working with anyone. You vet yeah. them, you know. It's even like in the polyamory episode that we talked mm -hmm. that we talked about that sort of stuff. You vet everyone that you come in contact with. Yeah. And it's no different with photographers and even models because I've had I've had shoots where. There were some skeevy models, you know, <laughs> but. Oh, yeah. You know, for me, I had an incident once with uh, two mutual friends of ours, Lady Bassarina and Blue. Yeah. My very first time working with Lady Bassarina, we did um, a shootout at Herman Park. She was dressed up as Zantana. Zantana, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Zantana, magician yeah. from, yep. from DC exactly Comics. I know exactly who you're talking yeah. about. And um, so we meet up at Herman Park and... I had, in order for Boo to be my assistant, we had did kind of a trade, and bef we got to the park early. Boo needed some new headshots, so she's in this yeah. real nice, tight, fitting dress. I took the headshots for, her. and so Bassarina's getting out her car, and these two guys, two black guys, jogging, just like what happened at the booty match. They see, they're like, "God damn!" So they come over, it's like, "Whoa, what's going on?" And I'm still getting my equipment. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't yeah. mind it, or whatever. And you know, they were respectful and everything, and they um. You know, they actually take pictures with them. Oh, what y'all doing? Oh, this is so cool. Da, 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 da. Exchange social media. So then the three of us, we walk into Herman Park, into the, the newer portion, the uh, McGovern mm -hmm. Fountain area, yeah. whatever. And, you know, we start shooting. So after a while, um, Blue had to go use the restroom. And I'm like, oh, the restroom's over there. So she wasn't even gone for two minutes. She comes back running. She's like, ish. I'm like, yeah. She's like, there's two guys from earlier over there. By the bathroom, like, one of them tried to follow me, and I was like, what? And I was like, hey, hold on. I was like, hey, yeah. hold my camera. I went over there, I walked to the guy. I was like, look, you know, y'all talked to him, y'all met him, y'all exchanged social media. It's like, look, we trying to do business. If y'all get the fuck out of here, yeah, y'all go catch these heads. I told him straight up like that, right here yeah. to the man. And they, oh, we saw a big homie. We saw her. We saw I was like, look, I understand. It's not every day you're doing your jog and you see tits and ass like this. Yeah. <laughs> Just be like in a bad term, you know. I, you know, like these are some of the behind the scenes pictures I took. Oh. I, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember these. Yeah, like I, I, I get it, but yeah. guys, you know, like y'all need to go back on your jog, like, but and, and trying to follow my friend into the fucking restroom, like yeah. that's that's not cool, bro. Like, like come I get on. it. They, you you want to talk to to the pretty lady? Yeah. But even even if that even if it wasn't the case of like you're in the middle of a shoot, you don't follow somebody into the bathroom. No, as you know, this, so. I, I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even, I mean, I guess just the way I was raised and I respect women and just people in general, like, I couldn't even gear myself to, to do that. Mm -mm. Um, and it was another time that I was real worried. And this, this involves you directly. Going back to um, when we shot at, at Wortham Theater at that fountain, when you got on that ledge, oh, yeah. I was scared as fuck. <laughs> oh, and you know what? The one picture I took, I didn't even get it right, the coloring was messed up. I think I had a setting off or something. I had to turn the picture black and white because, mm -hmm. you know, your gymnastic ass would get on a ledge in these boots and, and do this awkward pose. I'm just like, please, get, I remember get, get that there. One. You know that? Yeah. You know I'm like, please, if you fall off and it had to be at least a 20-foot drop. Yeah, it was or like something 20, like, feet. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, it, at least 20 feet. I'm just like, God, like, yeah, I don't want to like, get hurt. Yeah, my goblin ass like, climb, climbing on ledges <laughs> and in the trees and yeah, you know, I, I didn't I mind still, the trees so much, yeah. but it was when you got on that ledge, I'm just like, I, one, and that ledge I was, that, was yeah. real thin. I'm like, she just one I absolutely move, remember she that. She gone. I'm like, Lord Jesus, please. I remember that God. because it was, it was a shot where I was like leaning back <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, that's exactly so. what had me tripping. I'm just like, come, like this is take the picture yeah. quick. <laughs> I do, I do absolutely remember that. I will say, my favorite picture from that entire shoot was actually the one where I'm in the tree and it. And I like that one too. Yeah, where, you like a damn raccoon. Like a, yeah, yeah. Where it looks like I'm asleep in the tree. <laughs> I loved it. Oh, I've never been more more terrified in my life on uh, uh, shoot doing <laughs> anything uh, um, high risk. Besides working with me, have you ever been kicked out of a of a, of a place? Kicked out. I don't think I have that I know and that I remember. Okay. No, because it, other than 
that shoot, mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever shot anywhere where it's like, hey, this is a no public access area. Yeah, you're right, because every time we've shot besides that one has always been, um, we did the, it's either like a comic convention, comic mm -hmm. or the um, NRG Center or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was during or, Space City. Yeah, Space that City, That last yeah. year that they did Space yeah. City. <laughs> and then we did the other Booty of Mass Destruction shoot. We went to um, Kyle, yeah. The, yeah. the car collector guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so, yeah, so. Yeah, no, I don't think the, I've ever been kicked out of anywhere. <laughs> Um, you have I mean, any misconceptions and realities of the modeling industry, in your opinion? Oh, God. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about um, it. My favorite misconception to talk about is that you have to be a stick. You have to, that you have Thank to you. be so tiny and thin, like... I have I have encountered more photographers that would rather shoot bigger, thicker women, more Present. voluptuous <laughs> bodies because they're they're more real. Mm -hmm. And I know there's this this beauty standard that media puts on, but if you ask if you ask ten guys what they would prefer to see as far as like size and shape. They're gonna go with somebody who's thicker, whether it's bigger titties, bigger ass, bigger waist, Overall, whatever. Just like, voluptuous friend, yeah. And I know that like right now that is a big thing is, you know, being thick. I get it that trends come and go especially when it comes to appearance and sizes and stuff like that. True. But more often than not, your general audience, like people in general, prefer more natural sh and natural shaped and sized bodies. Like I'll be the first to tell you right now, I love a dad bod. Really? Okay. I love a good dad bod. I'll be damned. Okay. Like, I would say two out of three of my partners have a dad bod, but I'm pretty sure the third is is working on his. Mm -hmm. So, like, I love a, a dad bod. It's just there's something about it. I, I, it gives I, me I more to that. love. So. <laughs> Especially now we, you know, we we in winter yeah. time, and they say it's winter. We we gonna mm -hmm. get some cold days ahead. But no, I, I agree with that. And like me personally, and and I want to thank everybody that out there that has ever thanked me or gave me kudos of any kind for yeah. shooting voluptuous plus size women. Thank you. And I do it for three main reasons. One, because that's the kind of female that I'm attracted to personally. Yeah. First and foremost. Two, it's something that you don't see every day. And, and I like it. Well, like if you come on my social media, whether it's YouTube, IG, Facebook, you gonna be like, oh damn, she got curves. Oh damn, she got hips. Yeah, you know, she just thick. Damn, you know. And three is going back to like what you said. You know, it's just something that society says that oh, you got to be a, a stick or you got to be a size one zero. It's like nah, no, no, yeah. no, the hell you don't. You know, yeah. not not at all. Um, so no, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that that's, one. That's my biggest misconception that I like to talk about and go over with people because you are who you are. Like mm -hmm. you, your body is your body. It, as long as you're healthy, that's all I, absolutely. that's all I care about. Yeah, absolutely. So. What are some of your frustrations with modeling? Got any? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I've already gone over the, the whole like red flags with photographers mm -hmm. thing. Um, and there are other red flags with photographers that I could go off on. Um, as far as photographers go, I would mm -hmm. say like another one that it's a pet peeve for me um, where like the photographer will give me a theme and they'll, they'll give the theme out to multiple models and be like, hey, come to this shoot, uh, shoot with us. This is the theme. And then we'll, we'll go from there. And I've had shoots where 
shown up, shot, and then never got a single photo. What? Oh, or shit. I had one photographer tell me, oh, well, that's not what this theme is about. And it's, it's something where it's like, this is the theme. You give me the theme of horror, for example. Yeah. And then I give you horror and you tell me it's not horror enough. You didn't say it had to be hyper horror. You didn't say it had to be like gore. You yeah. didn't say it had to be body horror specifically. You know, you just give me a general theme and then tell me that uh, to show up. And when I do show up, you tell me I did it wrong. And see, that's what if communication you, comes yeah. in. You know, yeah, if you want, thereof. yeah, if you want something specific from the model, tell the model exactly what you want. And maybe, and maybe that's just more of, like you said, an issue of communication. And I'm the kind of person that, if, like I said, if you want something specific, tell me exactly what you want. Because you, you know me, yeah. I will be like, you know, for example, if you ask sex, you be like, hey, cheeks out. <laughs> that was basically <laughs> what I said via email. Hey, yeah. Daisy Dukes, cheeks out. Um, yeah, I literally Even the times you've been here on, on the podcast, it's like, hey, you know, come dressed up as this, that, and the other. <laughs> yeah. I remember for the, for the Booty of Mass Destruction shoot, I bought a pair of Daisy Duke shorts, and they weren't short enough, so I cut them. Even I remember shorter. you told me that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They look damn good on you. Woo! That's got to be one of my favorite shoots of yeah. all time, and I think that shoot really Just because put had, me on the map. We had such a good time. Yeah, and then, yeah. like, I remember going back a little bit, Kim had told me the next, after I had posted some of the, the behind-the-scenes stuff, at that time, me and her, we wasn't working together. I had moved on to another job, but she was still in mm -hmm. direct energy. So she said, Monday morning, She's in the elevator with one of our other co-workers, and he looks at her up and down, and he just goes, booty and mass destruction, huh? And just chucks the whole thing out there. I was like, and she told me that, I was like, oh, shit, that's awesome. Oh, that's I love it. I was like, he saw the behind-the-scenes stuff. <laughs> I was like, damn. But, oh, my gosh, I love um, that. Yeah, I, lo I love it, too, but... Um, but yeah, and yeah, people out there, that's, you know, and as a photographer, I try to tell photographers all the time, like, be very, communication is yeah. key. Don't yeah. be afraid. And I've gotten to the point in my life now where, like, I don't, like, I just turned 40 back in October. So I'm, I'm kind of in my head, it's like, damn, I'm almost like an old man now. <laughs> so I could kind of say and do whatever I want to a certain extent. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to disrespect nobody, but. When it comes to certain things, you know, I'm just gonna say, "Hey, th this is what I want. Let's yeah. let's you know, let's let's go with it." Like, well, it's kind of we're kind of at at least you and I are. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not to forty yet, <laughs> so got several years. But don't don't rush it. Don't rush it. <laughs> but we're kind of at this point. I wouldn't say so much in our lives, but kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, but with photography and modeling and cosplay and stuff like that. I think we have gotten to a point of, we know what we want to do, let's do it. Yeah. And not have to put all this extra effort into stuff that's not going to go towards what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's pointless. And so, tell me what you want so that I can do exactly what you want, we can get it done, and then we can go home and relax, or we can go eat, or, you know, like, we can go enjoy ourselves yeah. doing something else. It makes everything just yeah. run smoother, and you don't have to worry about having to do reshoots or, yeah. you know, nothing, yeah. you know, other, you know, it's like, you know, friends, like, if you wouldn't cut those shorts, I'd be like, uh-uh, that's, we, we got to reshoot you because <laughs> they're, they're, not, yeah. they're not short enough. Anyone got any scissors? And we just come <laughs> right now, something, you know. Uh, um now, and actually, you know, I owe you a huge thank you because there was a shoot that you did that I took pictures of you. It was at one of the conventions, and that actually got me my first publication with um, Voyage Houston Magazine. Let me see if I can find yeah. the picture. It was the one where you and Rachel were dressed up as like, uh, like Victorian era women. Oh yeah, it was at Comic Palooza. Um, she was Victorian era um, 
Catwoman, and I was Victorian era Harley Quinn. No, no, it wasn't that one. Was um, it? Mm -mm. It was. Um, I mean, y'all had like the big. You were in blue. Your outfit was oh. blue. Oh, you had like the ginger hair that was curled up. Ginger hair that was. I'm trying to go through my albums here and find it. Um, Cause, I, okay, so blue outfit with ginger hair tells me Wendy's. No, it wasn't. But it I wasn't don't think Wendy's. it was that. No, hold on, I just pass it. Up? No. Oh, here we. You know what? I'm. I'm I got it back. I, I got it mixed up. Um, Rachel was in blue. You were in like white and green. Here we go. Oh, oh, that was it. it wasn't even cosplay. It was just Lolita fashion. Oh, that yeah. I already got the wrong was, damn part of the world. No, I, I okay. said I said Victorian. That's <laughs> Lolita. No, that's that's the thing is my my outfit was actually like more Victorian inspired. Okay. Whereas uh, her because there's so many different sections of Lolita fashion. Yeah. Um, mine was Victorian inspired, and then hers was like sweet Lolita, sort of like dark sweet Lolita. Um, but yeah, that was at Anime Matsuri. Okay. The one and only year that I went to Anime Matsuri before I found out about the, the, yeah, all the that mess. And shit going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because they had they had the uh, Lolita um, tea. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and actually, yeah. specifically, it was this picture I had on my old Facebook yeah. um, photography account, and I guess they I stumbled upon that picture. Have that ha that hat that I made for that. I have the hat. Oh, that's dope. Um, and the um, sash, I don't have all of it. I actually pulled stuff off and cannibalized stuff from it to use on other things. Oh, so. nice. Yeah, and um, Voyage Houston Magazine hit me up and was like, hey, did you take this picture? I was like, yeah. And it was like, oh, we want to interview you. I was like, oh. Nice. I was like, yeah, I know I'm a photographer, not a model, <laughs> right? Or a makeup artist or a hairdresser or it seems just like I just... Take the photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know it, and the rest is history. Because <laughs> <Hey. laughs> like, not, you know, it's not You're that welcome. often. That, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> is it? You know, it's not that often that photographers we get in front of the camera or get to be yeah. interviewed. It's always another part of it. You know, um, and not saying that everybody's not not um, um, deserving enough. You know, but yeah. it takes you know it takes everything to um, to bring everything together. Of all the shoots you've done in your career, what would be your favorite? Oh gosh. Um, well, if you want to choose, maybe like top three, maybe. I can actually tell you my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband's going to hate my choice because uh -oh. there's, it's still in the house. It was one of my glitter shoots. Oh, yeah, those glitter shoots were yeah. the bomb. I yeah. need to start doing those again, but my husband would hate it. There's still glitter in our house from the last one we did, which was two, almost three years ago. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that. That's that. That gets kind of messy, but I mean, yeah. the and end the result is, was rewarding. Though. Yeah. Was so the thing rewarding. is, like, we literally shot it in the garage. All, all we did was put down like a piece of like plastic tarp mm -hmm. on the garage floor, and uh, it was with Abel. Yeah. Um, excellent he, photographer. Excellent yes, guy. Yes. And he's he's my go-to only because he lives five minutes from me. Makes sense. But he he came, <coughs> threw up a backdrop, and then like I had, there was one day I had five five models that I had covered in glitter. I wasn't even shooting that day. Wow. And I still ended up covered in glitter <laughs> because you know, five different women, several of them very curvy, very beautiful. One of them actually. Um, is a performer with the Ken Dolls now. Oh, okay. Um, she goes by, or they go by Dolly Divine. Okay. Um, so shout out to them. Yes, yes. Uh, but five beautiful women, people, you know, covered in glitter. And then it's one of those things that, like, it's never going to, glitter's never going to stay in one place. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's gonna get everywhere. Yeah. And then once it's there, everywhere, you're never getting rid of it. Yeah. But like, I have so much fun during those shoots because it's literally just. I mean, hell, at one point I was just 
full on naked and you couldn't tell because yeah. I was completely covered in glitter. And um, I have another model friend. She was at the one before that. Um, and that one is the one I'm talking about. That was my favorite. Um, basically, we started out doing a glitter shoot and Abel realized that he had some black lights. Oh. And we tested it out before we shot pictures to see if any of the glitter was neon or black light reactive. Yeah. And we ended up with such amazing shots. One of my favorite shots um, was with uh, a completely different person that was there at the beginning of the shoot and left like halfway through. But it was it was all black and I had some neon um, body paint. And we just took an old toothbrush and covered it in the paint and flicked it on us. Um, and I had I had emerald green glitter on, so you couldn't really see it in the black light. Uh, but she had like this teal green that worked really well with it. And we ended up getting shots to where it looks like we're just these beings made out of stars. Yeah. And it's so Stardust, gorgeous. Yeah. 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 It was just so gorgeous. Yeah, that it was, was well done. That was one of my favorites because it was super simple. Like, literally, slap some uh, some LA look hair gel on our bodies, patted glitter on us, and then, like, flicked neon paint on us and it, and went from there. That's, that's fucking so. genius. That's. <laughs> and, like, and like I said earlier, you know, some of your wardrobe malfunctions may turn into some of your best pictures <laughs> and true. just experimenting with it like yeah. being open and having a good time yeah can create some of the best pictures and that was to this day one of my favorite pictures still so i think for me two comes to mind one the booty bass instruction shoot Oh yeah, that was just fun. That, period. Yeah, I, we mentioned like fifty times during this episode, <laughs> but it was. And the second one for me would have to be what um, I had photographed one of my bodybuilder friends, my friend mm -hmm. Amber, and she had just won the weekend prior a bodybuilding show, so she's all jacked up, and we had shot out there at, uh, at Wortham Theater, and it was so cool because. In between of me changing lenses or whatever, like people are walking by and asking her questions or asking to take a picture with her. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not every day you see a, a jacked up female bodybuilder, yeah. you know, and it's like, hey, that's made me feel real good. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, like they, you know, have some uh, in Houston, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to I didn't to find... realize how many were here in Houston, to be honest. Oh, yeah, Houston's starting to be a hotbed, and, and they have a lot of competitions here. And, you know, of course, the competitions that, you know, the people, you know, that live here in the area are going to mm -hmm. go compete or at least go be a spectator, and then it draws people from other parts of the state of the region. Yep. Um, let's yep. see, like, this was, this is one of the photos. Yeah, you know, when she came on that where you could see her arms oh, yeah. and everything, and, like, Guys was gorgeous. stopping. It was like, who the hell is this woman? I mean, I don't blame him. She's gorgeous. <laughs> just, Oof, you know me. I like a good muscle mommy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? They, I, I, you know what? I need to make a point. Next time I have a bodybuilder photo shoot or do a bodybuilder podcast, <laughs> you got to ride shotgun with me. <laughs> and actually, I'm working on one right now. One of my friends, she's out at a contest this weekend, mm -hmm. so she'll probably be back Sunday or Monday. I want to see if I could get her. Oh, but you can't be here next Thursday. I can't, right? unfortunately, okay. no. Well, I, I try to work something something around. And this was um, this is a shot she took with her dog in the background. I think that was like right after someone had came and complimented her. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. You know, I like candy yeah. stuff when people don't know I'm there or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and final question I want to ask here. If someone came up to you and was like, hey, you know, black sheep, I want to get into modeling, you know, what, what's the first thing I should do? What, what would you tell them? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, I've had several people, not just modeling, but also cosplay, just be like, oh, I'm interested in this, but I'm worried about doing it. I'm worried, you know, what people are going to think. I'm worried that I'm not going to be good at it. Like, just do it. Go out and do it. Have fun. 
Like that's that's literally the big draw for me when it comes to cosplay and modeling. Yeah. Is and I think I've said it before in one of one of the first podcasts that yeah. I was on that it, photo shoots are my drug. Mm, same here. Like it makes me feel good. You know, if if you're not having a good time doing it, then it's why are you doing yeah, it? Yeah, it's not for you. But it's as far as like actual advice other than go do it. Um, <laughs> Definitely be sure to vet, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to end up in a situation where, you know, either you look like you've done something that you shouldn't have, or, you know, somebody is taking advantage of you. Don't, don't give anyone the chance to do that to you or put you in that kind of situation. So yeah, vetting is always good advice. If you're looking for TFP, you know, trade mm-hmm. for pay or time for pay. Um, join groups. There's groups on Facebook, oh, yeah. Instagram, on Facebook good, like yeah. all sorts. There's different groups on social media where you can network with those kind of people and work something out, you know. And just, yeah. Definitely, if you're going to get into it, find the community mm. because you're going to need it. So. I agree. And I got to say this as a photographer because 90% of the time I get asked by men, hey, what does it take to be a photographer? And I tell them up front, if you're going into photography to meet chicks, don't fucking do it. <laughs> it's going to make the rest of us look bad. And you're only going to end up getting yourself in trouble. Mm-hmm. And plus, don't go into photography unless you're serious to invest because just a basic level, yeah. professional camera, just basic, is just under $1,000. Yeah. And most of that does come with the kit. You know, you get the, uh, you know, a lens or two and some other goodies or whatever. But photography is expensive. And then, of yeah. course, after a while, and, you know, you and I, we've shot for years. You know, this is, without even me telling you, you know, this ain't the same oh, camera yeah, I that, that I start off with me. So every yeah. couple of years, you got to upgrade lenses and, and, and gear and stuff. You always got to keep up with the latest software. Yeah. yeah word, but, to, word to the wise for any models, mm-hmm. even if you're not, like, making a whole lot of money or, you know, if, you, if it's not... A steady income, that's fine. Write everything off on your taxes. Yes. You yes. can write off so much on your taxes. Fuel, parking, d- different Personal clothes, care. care. Oh, yeah. You can write off getting your nails done. I was just about to say, yeah. <laughs> Fucking right, yeah. Like shampoos, you know, makeup, stuff like that. It's, it's all considered, if you're using it for modeling and you're making money in any sort of way through modeling... You can write it off on your taxes. Yep. That is the one piece of advice I would say, like for models for sure. Oh, and yeah. And even photographers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, best believe this bad boy I'm shooting you on right here. Yeah. I got this back in August. This can is an R. Anybody want to know? I'm shooting right now mm-hmm. on an R50 guy from Best Buy for like 900 some dollars, so just under yeah. a thousand with tax. Best believe. Yeah. I'm doing my taxes. It's going, it's going on the spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. It's going on the spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. Even and my not husband. to mention these wireless mics that, that we're yeah. talking on. I think this wireless mic kit was about 50. I have to go back and look at my Amazon receipt. This light here, yep. I got this. Yeah, this is about 45. Oh, yeah, it's all going on the yeah. spreadsheet. Send it to my tax even, lady. <laughs> even my husband, like, because we occasionally host shoots at the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys are writing all that. Off fucking right. As, like, a photography space like he has written off written it off on his taxes oh that's smart yeah that's smart so okay then what can people find you at on uh, social medias um so let's see on facebook black sheep cosplay and modeling um same thing for instagram um i have not been active on my only fans because I have gotten a new job. Life. <laughs> and life, yeah. Health yeah, issues like have that. happened to. Oh, um, shit. Sorry to hear that. It's okay. I'm good now. Okay. That's and all then, that matters. And then if you're a TikTok person, I'm Black Sheep 8 on TikTok. TikToks are fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. That's, that's, a, that's a good I'm a follow cosplay people. TikToker, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I know us here at Unrestricted. Links will be in the description. 
Um, if you want to support the podcast for free, share everything. everything. <laughs> Comment on everything. Even if you don't like what we're saying, shit, come as long as respectful, I'll keep it yeah. up. But, you know, people go in left field and use profanity. Nah, I got to delete it. But, <laughs> like, uh, comment, share. If you're on TikTok, repost. Yes, that repost whole, like, good. favoriting mm -hmm. a video doesn't work. Repost it. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that on TikTok. Okay. Yeah, you can actually set your, uh, your settings. Like, whenever you go to comment on a video, yeah. there's a little thing at the bottom where you can, like, tap it and it, mark, it checks it off and it says repost. To where, like, every time you comment on a video, it just automatically reposts it. Oh, so. shit. Okay, I have to look into that. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> yep. Learned uh, that from, from my uh, partner in crime, okay. SNG Cosplay, there you go. <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, people, if you want to support us financially, you can do that on Patreon for as little as a dollar to three dollars a month. Those are the only two tiers we got because we're cheap here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this economy is, is inflation's fucked up, and I don't want to be... The cause of someone's <laughs> inflation <Yeah>. problems. <laughs> well, thank you, Black Sheep, for joining me this oh, this evening. Thank you it's for having me. Good to see me. you. My pleasure, as always. Um, shout out to everybody we mentioned. And uh, as always, everybody, um, until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. We're out of here. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Want to help the channel remain upstanding and dedicated to the truth? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below.